Good morning, friends. Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. And, you know, for some reason, I had it in my mind that we had actually uh, covered the food chain supply break here on Israeli News Live. But originally, as you can see right here, five days ago, is actually on Fact News Network, our uh, backup channel. So you guys actually never saw the video. And the reason why I'm saying this right now is because Congressman Scott uh, over here on Whitfield Harrington, good friend of mine, Leon, sent this to me, Whitfield Harrington, <clears throat> had posted where he speaks about the exact same thing. Just, uh, uh, well, August 15th is when the video was uploaded, so it's been more than five days ago where he's speaking about this as well. So I, I, I find that interesting, so I wanted to take and, and play a little clip of this right here where I spoke about this, and uh, I know some people think that when I speak about these things, oh, it's just it's just fear mongering and uh, uh, nothing. You know, th these are not intel reports, things like that. Well, there are things out there, and most people are just ignoring it. So let's take a look at what we had said right Good here. Morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Fact News Network, and looking at Zoom Earth. Uh, Let me get actually past pick that part there. Uh, yeah, we look. I'm um, going into all the things that are happening. Mile per hour winds were some of the top winds. Listen to this right here. Tell that that went through Iowa. Wind speeds were estimated at 140 miles per hour. When that's what looks like. That's a not large Hurricane Laura. Tower. That is the Drasho storm. Unbelievable wind speeds traveling that fast there. Uh, so anyway, you know. But as we get further into the video here, I'm going to talk about this food shortage right around five Jeez, minute uh, mark, and I'll leave the link for Factors words, right? Network for you. This here is, of course, not current. These are older photos. Uh, I don't know the timestamps of each one of these photos here. I'm guessing these were probably at the beginning of the Corona Corona pandemic scare. Uh, what we saw there, especially in certain items like in the produce, you had some produce, but I'll blow the image up for you there. Some produce was still available, but other things like potatoes, onions, things like that, they were just gone, gone as rapidly as you could imagine. Well, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we have been told officially from a letter that was dropped in our lap that starting in November, food chain supply is going to be broken. And uh, other commodities as well, not just food, but other commodities will become a short supply. Uh, we wanted to make sure you guys are aware of this, this, the seriousness of this, and that you take into consideration uh, stocking up and planning for your own families there. And as well, keeping in mind uh, with these storms that they talk about. All right. So we'd mentioned it over there, and I know we've mentioned a little bit here on Israeli News Live since then, but that was the original video that I did on that. And then, uh, like I said, Leon sent me, Leon Green sent me this one here from Whitfield Harrington. And I want to play a portion of this right here where Mr. Whitfield is speaking about this here and Congressman Scott also talking about the same thing. Um, a congressman, his name is Mr. Scott. And I think this is a, a committee hearing, um, the financial subcommittee. It's chaired by uh, Maxine waters and the secretary of treasury is there giving a briefing so this congressman begins to ask a question about farmers normally when you see these things uh, these meetings there's a formality to it a uh, congressman is normally given about five minutes to make a speech because there's so many people's there or to, to ask questions they give them about five minutes to speak. So I want you to hear him as he begins speaking. Let me go to one other area. Uh, to you, um, Secretary Menichin, none of the lending facilities established have targeted the needs of our agriculture industry. Now, why do I mention that? Food. It's coming. I mean, I can't see why people can't see this crisis. Food shortages are coming. It's almost like the farmers have been the forgotten ones. Are they, are they qualifiable as small businesses? 
Many of them don't know. They're sort of out there, just drifting along the misty flats. What are you all doing to help uh, uh, lift up and make sure that we give our farmers, our rural communities, the kind of help that they need? Because all the food chain is going down. You hear about the closures. The food processors are going out. Farmers are coming. These are small. Most of them, but they're very important. Why can't they be qualified as small businesses? Where are they? They're getting lost in the shuffle. And if we get a food shortage, we're in... Well, thank you. Mr. Lukemeyer, notice. Now, as you can see, they cut him off. They didn't let him uh, continue on. He just paused for a second because of just the shock of what's going on. And, uh, you know, but that's just the way it gets done. And what was shared with us is that there was an official meeting uh not made public, but an official meeting about this broken food chain that's going on. It was in the Pentagon, and they know for a fact that it's going to be a broken food chain uh, supply. A supply supply chain for the food is going to break, and as well as other commodities. Now, I mentioned to you, I felt like that those other commodities would include uh, fuel and lumber, things like that. And, of course, then we have Hurricane Laura that made landfall last night. And uh, just to, you know, give you a little bit of a glimpse of some of the things on this. Um, Louisiana is under siege from one of the strongest hurricanes to ever hit the state. Hurricane Laura ripped its way on shore near Cameron early Thursday morning, and the destruction hasn't stopped since. Laura's winds were downright violent. The strongest cyclone winds to hit Louisiana in more than 150 years. 150 years. Let me show you some footage here. Uh, this here is from Reed uh, Timmer on Twitter. Hey! Hundred and fifty mile an hour winds as this thing came on shore. And the damage that it has done, the the surge, storm surge, hey, twenty foot. And there you have different uh, amounts of rainfall, things like that. But there is just all types of videos out there um, of this. You can see the satellite footage there as the storm comes up there, right up close to the uh, Texas uh, line there. And of course, there's a lot of refineries, even there in that part of Louisiana, as well as in Texas. So I have a feeling we're going to see a massive, massive surge in, in fuel prices. Uh, you know, just just a whole lot of things going on there. So everyone talking about strongest storm in 150 years to hit uh, Louisiana's coast. There, I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Have a great day.